I'd like to call a meeting of the Willett City Council in order for April 13th. Can we all rise and join Larry in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Once a teacher, always a teacher. Yeah. Roll call, please. Councilman Petrensky? Yes. Strong? Yes. Federal? Yes. Hornsby? Here. <coughs> Here. So do we have any public communications seating this evening? These are for anything that's not on the listed agenda. No action will be taken. Anything at all? Um, public comment? Yes, public comment. Yeah, I have it on agenda. Right? Sure. Come on up and please and introduce yourself that microphone is for the television it doesn't amplify your voice in here just to hand them to her and she'll give them to us Good evening, my name is Don Rowe. I'm the Mendocino County Coordinator for Californians for Electoral Reform. And I'd like to tell you about a bill currently in the California Senate that will greatly expand local control over local elections. SB 1288 is uh, currently moving through the Senate uh, committees. And it would allow general law cities and counties and school boards to switch to ranked voting if the voters choose to make the switch. Uh, some of you may remember in 2009 there was a similar bill, AB 1121, which got through the Assembly and Senate mostly along party lines and was vetoed by Go then Governor Schwarzenegger. So we're trying again, we're much more hopeful that we can get this one by Governor Brown. And, uh, and that one was endorsed by the Ukiah City Council and Fort Bragg City Council and a few other council members. So we're, we're hoping to get some endorsements here again. And um, you have the, your handout includes the the fact sheet from Senator Leno, I'd just like to point out a few highlights. First of all, the change to, any, uh, to a different voting system is entirely voluntary and requires voter approval. And he just points out when there are more than two candidates for office, the current system can fail badly because of vote splits and spoiler effects. And this uh, applies both to single winner and multi-winner elections such as city councils and school boards. And SB 1288 does allow for ranked voting in both types of elections. Uh, he gives an example of the mayor of Adelanto in San Bernardino being elected with 31% of the vote. It's, uh, which hardly inspires voter confidence, and we wonder why voter turnout is so low. Uh, also because uh, there's, there's no runoffs, it saves, saves money and it allows local elections to be coordinated with state and federal general elections when voter turnout is much higher. This is endorsed by uh, California Common Cause, League of Women Voters, League of California Cities, and uh, several other uh, nonprofits such as Californians for Electoral Reform. I have a few websites there for more information and my contact information is where I know some of you are familiar with ranked voting, so I don't want to take up too much time going into details. You're welcome to contact me with any questions or concerns. And as I said, what I'm asking the, the council to do is send uh, letters of support if you're so inclined. Uh, Senator Leno has requested uh, letters of support if possible by April 19th as this is moving in through, the cal through the Senate Elections Committee now. So any individuals who would like to send support uh, right away, that would be very much appreciated and also if the council would choose to send a letter of support from the entire council, that would be very helpful as it moves to the various committees and to the Senate floor. So thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, passing this information along. Do we have anybody else that would like to uh, address the council under public comments? Items not listed on the agenda. No action is going to be taken. Who's? Second, third, and last call. I don't know that, that you qualify for this one. Uh, no, I, I wanted to comment on uh, Mr. Ra Rowe's presentation. I'm wondering if we could agendize uh, an endorsement of that for our next meeting. Well, we I'd like to look at the material. Yeah. Well, we obviously can't uh, yeah. do it at right. this meeting because yeah. it's not on the agenda, but I think it is a worthy uh, issue, and I, I would like to see us take a position if that's possible. All right. We will check, look into that. Thank you. 
Any other public comment? Seeing none, we're going to move to uh, our first item on the agenda under public matters, which is an update from Caltrans uh, construction manager, Rich Melvin, and I see Jeff's here as well. Uh, but uh, Rich, yeah. thanks for coming down. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm Rich Melvin. I'm the construction manager for Caltrans over the Willis Bypass projects. And so that would be the bypass phase one, which is going right now, uh, scheduled to conclude in November of this year, uh, as far as open to traffic. And then uh, the other going contract is the mitigation work in the valley. And uh, both those resident engineers are here tonight, and they'll, they'll talk about, when I'm finished here, we'll give you an update on the construction status. Uh, so we are the construction branch of Caltrans. We do contract administration. The resident engineers, uh, Jeff and Ragu, who are here tonight, are in the responsible charge of those construction projects during the construction phase. Uh, you know, when the contractor comes on board, uh, we meet the contractor, we do change orders, progress payments through the life of the contract, and, and make sure they comply with the contract. So that's, that's our role. Um, the other projects, plural, uh, Willits Bypass projects, uh, would be Ryan Creek Fish Passage, which is scheduled to go um, in spring of 17. Uh, so we, we assume that will conclude uh, in 17, and then we'll have the relinquish, uh, the uh, Sherwood Road and the relinquishment uh, of old Highway 101. That should begin in 17 and conclude in 18. And um, so with that, uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Jeff Wright to give you an update on the bypass project, and then we'll go to Ragu. Good evening. Uh, thank you, members of the Council and Mayor, for allowing us the opportunity to address you again. Uh, we're here tonight to uh, give you an update as you request for the bypass. As you uh, may be aware, we're scheduled to uh, complete the project at the end of this year. If everything comes together as well, we should be open to traffic by early November is our scheduled date right now. Uh, current progress on the project is we're, as the update that was forwarded to you suggests, we're uh, from the viaduct south, we're paved out with the exception of the final open grade friction course paving. Uh, we have some guardrail work that's being installed right now. We have bicycle safety rail on all the bridge structures and retaining walls going in. Uh, as we speak, uh, the, the contractor is making good progress on that. Uh, the majority of the drainage work everywhere on the project is nearing completion. All the drainage is functional. We have some final uh, raising of inlets to the final grade that has to be completed in the future here. Uh, the bridge work is probably in its 98-99% stage. We just have some cosmetic finish work for the most part to finish and uh, the remainder of the barrier uh, bicycle rail to install on the bridges. Uh, on the north end of the project, we're uh, scheduled to gear up here somewhere in the first part of May, weather dependent, and uh, work forward towards completion uh, of the project this fall. So. Uh, not sure if you have any questions that you'd like addressed. Um, uh, drainage off of the viaduct. It's been brought up to me. That might be the joint seal assemblies. Do you know when that's going to be done? As far as when during significant rain events, there's been there's like vents and the yeah. water's just pouring <coughs> out. Is that? Well, it's the the viaduct is nearing its completion, and the joint seal assemblies that are addressed on here are the actual expansion joints in the bridge because okay. the bridge expands and contracts every day with the thermal oscillations that we have. And so they have joint seals that are uh, essentially a steel joint with rubber in it that allows it to expand and contract with the heat of the day. And those also uh, pass water over the top of them to whatever drainage structures there are. A, por a portion of the viaduct has a drainage system in it that collects the water and uh, transfers it off the end of the bridge and, and off each end of the bridge but the majority of the viaduct has what we call scuppers in it and the water flows to that scupper point and it just falls through the deck to the underlying ground. Okay. And uh, so probably what you're talking about is the, the, what people have seen is the fact that the joints are not complete, that water can't flow over the joints and is falling through, but it also could be a scupper that they're observing. <coughs> uh, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess you stop construction for the winter, especially with the El Nino coming through. Um, when do you, have you started yet? Uh, we have resumed construction on limited portions of the work. We started around the first part of April here. 
and we actually uh, had quite a bit of work going in a very limited capacity here, there, and everywhere on the project. Uh, it was preparatory work for the bicycle rail installation. They were out there drilling and bonding the threaded rods to mount the bicycle rail in the late parts of December and early January. Uh, but by January-ish, we essentially had nothing except stormwater maintenance and sampling going on throughout the project. And you know, we've begun picking up speed again with the guardrail installation on the south end of the job. And uh, the assumption is weather dependent will start the first week of May in earnest and move forward towards completion late this fall. I was mostly interested, uh, I don't know if you're the one that would answer this or not, about the mitigation. Yeah, project. no, it's a, I know I'll defer to coming up soon. Ragu here, and he can give you an update okay. on the mitigation projects and uh, what their status is. I just wanted to be able to address so, any questions. Yeah, on have. the, when you tie in on the northern interchange, Jeff, is, <coughs> that, it, is that gonna have a, a long period of traffic control or is, uh, is that? We are uh, in the final throes of figuring out the final stages of that, but the, the plan is, and we're spending just a little bit of extra money to try to avoid having the 24-hour traffic control that was originally contemplated, and we're actually gonna have phases where we push the traffic to the very west to accommodate building the new easterly side, and then we'll do some traffic splits where we actually put traffic onto the new north interchange to, alleviate, to divert part of that and then we'll work in the middle of the two traffic lanes and then we will shift the southbound traffic onto the new middle section and finish building the extreme west section in a very generic approach. So we're anticipating somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, six to eight weeks of total staging time and there's multiple sequencing that happens with that in a very broad brush answer. Have you got all of the fill dirt in place? I mean, have you moved all the dirt you need now? I mean, is it we, all on site or do you still have to transport? We feel we have all the dirt on site. The contractor's feeling a little bit nervous that they're just balanced and maybe a little shy, but uh, there's no intention to haul any large volumes of dirt to the project. We may need a few cleanup loads, uh, but I think we have enough excess in locations around the job to finish everything. Uh, the 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 all of the tanks that you have out there are here for your for your stormwater I, I guess you'd say yep that's our active treatment system to treat the stormwater yes how how long will those have to stay in place uh, we're forecasting that those will be in service through the first of June uh, just to catch you know we, we know that based on history that here in I, April I was really talking about next winter will you have no the, the the intention is is that everything will be complete by next winter it will be in a permanent configuration and the majority of the slopes are already built and vegetated, so the hope is that we won't have any need for any uh, additional treatment other than the scheduled, planned, permanent uh, best management practices that are built as part of the project. So those, are, those should go away this summer and not come yes, back? Yes, uh, by the 1st of June, we're hoping they're gone and not come back. Okay. And I have a question that m this might be a Mr. Melman, so this could be at the end. I, I would love to hear about any opening uh, ceremonies that are that are planned, but it, we can I can wait until after. But. So if there's no other questions about the bypass. I'll defer to Rich. Sure. Thank you, yeah, He's the some resident, resident engineer with the mitigation contracts, and he yeah, can give Rich, me an come on up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Raghu Tangavelaitam. Uh, I'm the mitigation RE. Uh, so thank you for giving us the opportunity to give you an update on the mitigation project. Um, as Rich said, we currently we have two mitigation contracts in construction. The first mitigation <coughs> project uh, was start, started last summer. We have about 40% uh, progress and uh, we can have a suspended for the winter and um, end of this month or beginning of May, we will resume the work. Uh, main um, item of the work in mitigation contract one, it's a uh, wetland establishment. Uh, we have uh, 13 different sites. Uh, we graded and uh, seeded with the uh, locally collected wetland seeds to stabilize. And this fall, those area will be planted with the wetland plant. In addition to that, we have um, uh, we have about 19 uh, stream crossing to facilitate the grazing operation within the valley, which um, we build the hardening crossing through the stream. And uh, also we have prepared the, um, the riparian planting area by the mean of uh, light treatment and heavy treatment, uh, which is kind of moving the 
grass before they seed it. And the heavy treatment is a scraping about three inch of the, uh, the invasive plant and dispose it outside. This all, uh, uh, most of the work's done last summer. So this summer we have uh, remaining uh, heavy treatment and uh, target weed removal we will continue. In the fall, um, rest of the, uh, the plant in the wetland and the riparian will be completed. So by end of this year, the contract number one, uh, the construction phase finish and we start the uh, plant establishment work. Contract number two, um, it's mainly for the planting. Uh, this contract was awarded last summer and uh, approved late summer, so they couldn't do any field work. Uh, <coughs> the contract is scheduled to start the work uh, late May. Mainly they're going to come and prepare the ground for the uh, plant um, uh, wetland and the riparian planting. Um, by end of this fall, the planting work will be complete. Should be completed, then plant establishment for the mi mitigation contract two will start. Um, that's the status of the both contract. Um, if you Are you going to have to irrigate those plantings? Uh, yes. Uh, so the part of the uh, the planting work, uh, uh, we start the irrigation. We uh, the contractor established the existing wells and uh, they resurface and everything ready. So this summer they're going to uh, build the irrigation system and um, yes, yeah, so they are planning to irrigate the plants. So you haven't, uh, what are you doing with the elk? It was an issue very beginning uh, last, uh, last fall right after we planted, but uh, they, but it, uh, for the few days then after that we didn't have that issue yet. So we are closely monitoring and um, see um, it become an issue, then we will deal with it. Yeah, yeah. I see Ron's got a good question first, I guess. Um, I, th I think it's important. I, I, I like to see some, for the public's um, benefit, the uh, an explanation of the strategy that you followed. Last year, there was a, a you know public forum that showed pictures of devastation, you know, ripping up the soil and all this other stuff, and I, you know, I knew that this was not the end game. Could you, could you address, you know, the process, you know, how you, how you make a, an omelet, you know, you break the eggs first and then you, you, you could you go through that and, you know, wh which is your, the, um, the contract one and contract two pretty much covers that. So, you know, what's, what's the sure. philosophy? What, what's the, the plan? So, uh, we uh, the wetland establishment, we have 13 different sites selected by the expert from Caltrans and we, we had a grading plan given to construction. We graded and disposed the soil to the um, plasma south site. And after we grading, that's, uh, that's what the major excavation, I would say grading work we have done. So, I'm not sure you are referring to that. Well, well let, let me ask you, you know, interject. Uh, so that was a necessary part. You have to get rid of stuff before you can bring new stuff in. Is that? Yeah. So what we have to do, there are certain grading plan. They monitor the groundwater and uh, based on that, they want to grade the ground. So they will have a seasonal wetland. These are not year round wetland. So th there is a th science behind why we have to grade it. And this is what I'm getting at, yeah. Yes. So uh, th that's what is designed by the uh, landscape architect and the environmentalists, and we have done uh, uh, a lot of studies, and based on that studies, uh, we came up with a grading plan, which, uh, which uh, we excavate to the finished grade to establish the wetlands. So the, so the end game, once you finish, and, and you have uh, contract two, I assume there's going to be more than that? Contract two is a, a different location. The okay. contract one is the entire project site. Mainly, we prepare the contract two is another specific location. So, so when it's all done, what do you, what are, what are we going to have? Is it, uh, it, uh, that's too much of an open-ended question, I'm yeah. sure. But w when these when these mitigation contracts are completed and all the plants are in, what are we going to see? In theory. 52 the, the, acres of wetlands. The wetlands and the wetland and the riparian plants. So it's we have the uh, the MMP prepared by the Caltrans staff, and based on that, they come up with the different projects. So as a construction RE, uh, my part is administrating the construction. So the science behind is that there are a lot of project development team involved in that. So uh, 
maybe we can get back to you on the details. Yeah, well, I mean, you show in mid-contract two that you're going to install 287,000 plants, and I imagine yes. by the by the end of the thing, you're going to have maybe half a million plants or whatever. Is that? Yes. Uh, uh, the contract one, we have 400,000. and contract two, we have 289. Uh, we have few more other contracts coming. The possibly million plants. So that everything has been torn up is eventually going to be either a wetland, a seasonal wetland, right? Yes. Or maybe you're going to create some year-round wetlands as well, or just seasonal? Uh, the se some of them are seasonal wetlands. Some of them are the... the go back to the nature so there are different strategy of the mitigation okay. within that so we're not going to have a lot of bare earth i mean we're going to have like nature there will be no to, to help her move out a little bit here uh the the strategies of mitigation project is is that we need to build additional wetlands out there so we went out through the valley and bought the land that we could most of it was some sort of wetland so we are improving the quality of those wetlands and so in order to do that there's you know almost 100 years worth of pasture grasses that have been planted out there that was necessary to scalp that and remove it through the heavy treatment process he referenced. So we removed three inches of the existing grass and vegetation to give a better chance for the species and types of plants that they want to grow to have a successful wetland be planted without competition from those harder, heartier pasture grasses that have been historically growing uh, due to uh, man's improvements out there. And then also we have areas that were upland that were graded down to create a depression so that they're no longer upland and well drained so that they will retain water to develop these seasonal wetlands that are requested. So to answer your question, yes, there will be no denuded bare areas out there. Everything will be vegetated and we have a very specific seed palette that was dictated in the mitigation and monitoring plan that you referenced that was negotiated with the regulatory agencies to develop the wetland and plant species that they desire to see out there that mimics more of what nature would have had for the wetland out there and try to remove those invasive pasture grasses that were planted historically out there. I don't know if that's better answer. I mean, Ron, it's, it's exactly what we did when we put in right. the wastewater plant and put in exactly well, similar I mean, process. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Actually, I was looking for you to actually say the words. I think it's important that the public understands, you know, what's behind it. So. Um, if I recall, when I looked at these contracts, you know, originally, there is a, uh, a multi-year uh, component to it where they're, 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 they're monitored for successful growing and they're replaced, or how does that work? So the, the plant establishment, right after we complete the plant installation, three years of plant establishment, which is a part of our contract, so contractor they're going to have year around they're going to go and weed, weeding and um, pruning and uh, whatever the, they have to any plants they have to replace they will replace so so three years they will be monitoring this what are the plants we are planting and, and that's a fair uh, amount of time that nature can take over yes that's the standard caltrans standard so any mitigation plan the three years of plan establishment is a standard mm -hmm. we use okay good thanks uh, um, on these creek crossings, are these, um, they're not elevated, right? They're, no. they're so what we, for what cattle we, or? Yeah, yeah. We, we kind of a, uh, scrape a little bit of about feet below and nine inch cobble and place it on top of that, there's some clean sand and gravel place it. So when they, they're easy to cross the cattle so they don't um, um, Tear damage up the, the water quality. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anybody else up here have any? Questions on this project? Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any questions from the public? Mm -hmm. um, well, how are we going to do this? You, you asked about the opening ceremony. Yeah, do you yeah. want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, let's really do that first. Then. Um, so, uh, so they, mm -hmm. internally, we're working on a date of September 16th to have a ceremony on the grave. So basically, uh, uh, the dedication of the viaduct and I can go ahead and uh, you know uh, maybe send a list of the pomp and circumstance that will uh, transpire that day basically a ribbon cutting uh, internally what what they would like to do uh, is have it open to traffic on that so you have a ribbon cutting and then you open it to traffic and they picked the date of September 16th thinking about rain and the weather and they thought that would be a, a good day I think it's a Friday um, but currently, contractually, we have an opening date that's in writing, uh, open to traffic date of November 
eight, which uh, was quite a bit of negotiation to do that. And so contractually, uh, in our little house, construction branch, we we're open to traffic uh, November 8th which is this year. And then uh, politically, um, they would like to have the, the opening ceremony on, on September 16th. And they would like to have an open traffic on that day, but we're currently in negotiations <coughs> with the contractor. We have to go ahead and do the north end tie-in. We're also going to replace that bridge uh, at Up Creek, right by the teepee on, on existing 101. Um, uh, we're going to replace that bridge as a fish passage as part of our environmental commitment. We'll, we'll regrade the channel for Up Creek and replace that bridge. And so we're currently in negotiations on those schedules right now. Um, but, but the ceremony, we're, we're scheduling it for September 16th. We're currently open to traffic November 8th, and, and we're kind of working through the through the open traffic date. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and get with uh, our internal public affairs and maybe generate uh, a list of, of what they thought would be uh, transpiring on that day as far as the, the ceremony. And then we'll have to, we were talking about getting together with the city and, and MCOG and, you know, hey, you know, what do we all, what do we all want out of this? So that has yet to happen. Because I had heard rumors of maybe a, um, like a 5K walk. <laughs> so yeah, that wouldn't be, more, uh, more yeah. yeah, which I think would be neat if there was some pedestrian access. Run, or, you yeah. know, a, a foot race, you know, yeah. Or working, something, just because there's not going to be pedestrian access on there after I November, think I so. I saw an email, uh, the kids club or the... Uh, yeah, or maybe. No, so, anyway, yeah. we're, we're kind of... Things we'll, in the works. We're, we're, we'll work through all those issues. Okay. Great, thank you. But, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Um, so, um, if you address your comments up here and we can pick the appropriate person to answer, if it's a question or a comment, or come on up and introduce yourself. Can yeah. I mention one thing well, just as people are just, coming up? Let me just do this, okay? Okay, but it has to be the recording. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Carlin Diamond, and um, I don't know if you, Jen, I'm just happy to hear that some town trans people are going to be here tonight, that's why I came. Um, I'm concerned about the relinquishment of our main street, and uh, we've got a whole bunch of things happening this next week um, that um, seem to be contingent on Caltrans and the city council or citizens uh, agreeing on how much cooperation there is uh, from Caltrans to our relinquishment plans. Uh, so I'm, I'm concerned about that. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of on the outside with this, but as I understand, we had a, um, a pretty good grant from Caltrans. And are any of you able to speak to that? Or we have a, a grant? And uh, that that was to cooperate with the city with the plans um, for Main Street and um, not just kind of pave it, you know, all the way down or whatever. Anyways, if there's anybody who can enlighten me with any part of that, I'd really appreciate it's, it. It's my understanding the city uh, went ahead and got a grant and, and they hired a consultant uh, to look at the stretch of roadway and that uh, that consultant will be finishing their plans sometime in the end of May. Yeah, I, I can let me let, 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 We'll let Adrian so, answer that. Okay. Okay. These guys Great. are kind of Thank focused you. outside the city limits. <laughs> Work. Go ahead, Adrian. Do you want to address that while we're sure? So we did receive a um, sixty. Uh, let's see, that's a long grant. Um, a large grant, uh, sustainable transportation planning grant, um, and we have been going through the process. Uh, where we're at currently is we have a design team hired, and we've been working with them, city staff, Caltrans, and the consultants have been. Uh, uh, meeting regularly either in person or on, on the phone to prepare for next week's five-day planning fair and that next <coughs> week is all about community engagement um, so it's really the community's opportunity to weigh in on all of your thoughts and opinions and, and what you'd like to see happen um, all along Main Street uh, and the result from that will be a design that will be uh, preliminarily shared with the community um, uh, next Friday evening, so at the, on the fifth day of this planning fair. Um, and there will be some follow-up events to that, but uh, the goal is to get the 
um, those plans to Caltrans by the end of May so that they can incorporate into their plans for the relinquished sec section of the roadway um, as much as, as they can. And there have been ongoing discussions about um, cooperative agreements between the city and Caltrans, uh, so for the things that they can't do on their own as part of their project, what can the city do um, to facilitate those things happening? Um, we're looking at, I'm sure, a, a multi-phased project over a number of years um, because we will have to seek other funding sources to get some of these things done. Okay, uh, next person. Hello, I'm Kim Bancroft and very much looking forward to the return of, of um, Main Street to Willits and hope that will go well for Willits. I'm also interested in hearing about what Caltrans has to say about the future of the Native American artifacts that have been found in the mitigation lands. There's been a lot of consternation about what happened to those lands and to the archaeological sites and to the artifacts that were found there. So could anybody speak to that, please? We have, um, we have, uh, I'll try. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the three Native American tribes represented during, on site during earth disturbing activities. We also have uh, uh, a hired archaeologist through Pacific Legacy who's on site full time during earth disturbing activities. We have environmental, surf, surf, uh, environmental sensitive areas that have been segmented off uh, and they're, they're being reviewed and in theory, they're going to be turned into a wetland. And um, the only thing in the construction phase is we're doing an uh, interpretive center, or, or rather a, a display, or we call it an interpretive center? And, no, so as, as part of the bypass project, uh, we've been requested to do some hardscape improvements to build uh, potential parking areas for an interpretive center at the North Interchange that will be it's in the current state of evolving. I know our environmental staff, which includes archaeologists, is working with the tribes to come up with what that interpretive center will look like. And I know that there are discussions about artifacts that have been found, and I know that there's uh, much higher level discussions than I'm privy to about what is going on with those and what the law dictates is supposed to happen and what the ultimate disposition of those are. And unfortunately, we don't have quite enough information because the discussions are happening between the tribe and the cap appropriate Caltrans staff, and there's a confidentiality agreement that uh, limits the amount of information that's shared with people that aren't directly involved in that, and we're not directly involved they, they in that. They don't want so. folks to know the exact nature of what's there because they don't want it exposed, so, so the wrong people might, mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of treated that way. Uh, but there is a programmatic agreement that the environmental branch, or the construction branch, the environmental branch at Caltrans goes through with the tribes, and they are in the process of trying to resolve that programmatic agreement. Uh, but I, that's that's why that's what we know at this time. So sorry, we can't answer your question a little better, but and we we only have so much information because of the separation of the department. So thank you. Anybody else have a question or comment? But, yeah. My name's Ellen Drell, and I have several questions, but I'll try and group them, um, and maybe they can be answered or answered at some future date. But I want to follow up on some of Ron Ornstein's questioning. I am also... Um, wanting to know what the irrigation system out there is going to look like um, with 700,000 to a million plants being, I, I mean, I don't know to what extent each is going to be irrigated or what areas are going to be irrigated, but I would like to have a description of what the irrigation system is like that has, I, I guess, mainline irrigation, something like 50,000 50,000 feet of mainline irrigation has been put in, but I'm assuming that um, the plants will be accessed through drip lines or irrigation lines and emitters and uh, pumps and wells in various places. I would like to know, you know, what's that going to look like? I know that even on a one-acre farm, 
the accumulation of plastic pipe can be atrocious. So I'm wondering how Caltrans is going to manage laying out all this plastic irrigation and then gathering it up before the parts of the valley flood and have it get washed away if that's a possibility. I'd also like to know how much water Caltrans is anticipating using to irrigate um, close to a million plants uh, and and where will that water come from? Where are the wells? Are there several wells? Is there one well? So I'd like a, uh, you know, I would like, and I think a lot of other people would like to have a visual image of what this system is going to look like, because it has the potential to affect neighboring wells. For one thing, it also has the potential to um, cause a lot of trash to accumulate in the valley and. I don't know if Caltrans is aware, but Little Lake Valley is basically, you know, it was pretty much virgin in terms of being assaulted by modern day uh, agricultural toxics, including lots of use of plastics. It, um, so, so you're bringing a lot of potentially toxic stuff into a valley that never had it before. So that's one question. The other question is, I'm very confused about the use of herbicides for all these plants and for the uh, eradication of invasive species, in particular blackberries. Uh, my reading of the contracts, which I'm not claiming is expert by any means because it's extremely difficult to understand these contracts because their uh, works in, I mean, they're constantly changing. But it seems like the language for use of herbicides is still in these contracts. There are still lists of herbicides that can be used. In fact, in one contract I was reviewing just the other day, it re requires that herbicides be used on blackberries. I don't know if that's the case. It also, one of the contracts I was reading also called for the use of st soil sterilant in a, a, a two-foot two diameter area around wetland plants, and if you multiply a two-foot circle by 700,000, you know, you're getting, you're, that's a lot of soil sterilant out there. Very, um, I mean, you know, cutting-edge agriculturalists are not doing that anymore. <laughs> um, so I would hope Caltrans would not uh, include that anyway. If their language is in the contracts, I think it, it needs to be dealt with. And then there's also still language about use of poisons to kill rodents. Rodents are the basis of the food chain in Little Lake Valley. Rodents feed lots of mammals, lots of raptors, eagles, owls. Rodents are the basis of the food chain. And I know that you don't want rodents to chew on your 700,000 wetland plants, but if you try to poison them to protect those plants, um, you're going to introduce all, a havoc into the food chain of Little Lake Valley. So, Can you wrap it up? Yes. So um, I would like someone to address that issue. Are these references to poisons just boilerplate and happen to show up in the contract because no one's bothered to eliminate them? Or are they actually part of the contracts and potentially going to be used out there? Thank you. Right, come on up to the mic, maybe, so the television audience can hear you. So, the currently we have two contract in construction. Both contract I didn't see this language, so I'm not sure you are referring to the uh, construction contract or some other different documents. Um, as far as five four is the mitigation contract that has it. Number five four is the mitigation. You call it number one, the big one. Okay, but we... Are you uh, addressing we herbicides, or what are you addressing? What are we talking about? <laughs> the rodents. Are the rodents? rodents. Oh, rodent. I don't recall that either. Yeah. So, uh, and I don't, as your contractor employed, that... They haven't used it, so uh, the, they have started up. We haven't used any of those, so I'm... Uh, what about the soil sterile and have, have they? No, we, we I'm not aware of either one of those either. And, and, and to the best of my knowledge, the, our contractor is not planning on employing those. But uh, the best policy would be to perhaps follow up with Caltrans with a public inquiry request 
and we could get the appropriate people to address your answer. So the poison, the rodent poison and the sterile, we are, we we are, not, using, we we are. are not using the products and uh, you, could you address the herbicide? The herbicide, it, it was an optional uh, in the contract, but contractor is not using that. They elect to use a mechanical and manual method to reduce <coughs> the so we are not using any herbicide in both of the contracts. And then in a description of the irrigation system is the irrigation control. system so even though we have the the 400,000 plant in the uh, contract one uh, most of those are the grass those they won't have any irrigation plant so with, within the wetland creation site they may not build the uh, dripping system because we don't control the contractor contractor design decide how they want to water the plant but in fact uh, with the discussion of the contractor, they are not <coughs> planning to irrigate entire 400,000 uh, plants. There are some irrigation systems they're going to build for the riparian plants, and <coughs> their, their plan is when they plant it, they're going to use the water uh, irrigation, then uh, and before the winter, they're planning to remove all of them because, as you mentioned, that may be washed out in the valley. <coughs> so um, temporary basis, even year two, they may not need to do, use many of the system, but if they have to, they will use, but those are the temporary bases as needed, they will use. And also part of the irrigation, they, they may use some of the, the water from the trucking instead of building a network and <coughs> dripping system. Very good. So. Are, you know, I mean, it's, it's much like a timber harvest plan and meeting stocking standards after or by artificially planting trees or, uh, but the, there's that requirement that you meet the, the stocking standard after, and you're saying three years? Three years, plan established. You know, you have it five years in timber, but but is the contractor the one that is, that is he bonded to, to the, is he the one that's responsible to, for that survivability, or is Caltrans the one that is? No, the contractually they are responsible for the survivability. That's the main reason we don't want to control the irrigation system. So um, they are the one responsible for the maintaining. After three years, we're going to have a final inspection and they have to meet our success criteria. Either they meet it or they've got to replant. They have to replant. Every year they're going to replant it if they don't meet. 90% of the plant should be survived within that planted plant. So if anything less than 90%, they have to bring it to 100%. So, so yeah, that's an interesting point. So they need 90% survival of every planted tree to make stocking on their, or planted, planted. every plant? The, the total plant, 90%. When we do the uh, annual inspection, if goes below 90%, they have to replant up to 100%. If it's uh, 95%, then we will monitor for the year two. So up the minimum, they have to meet 90% success criteria, survival so, of the plant. So at the end, at, after year three, does it, does it have to be 90% successful mm -hmm. to get signed off? Signed off, yes. Wow, that's a pretty high. So I mean, that's for, one of the Usually reason. initial planning is twice what you need to meet your stocking standards. You know, you plan 100 to get 50, but you're going to plan 100 and you actually need 95 to survive in order to meet your stocking standards. That's a pretty, it's a pretty ambitious uh, survivability with the stuff that you got to work with. Do we have any other questions out there? Yes. Um, I wanted to know if um, the conservation easements have been placed on the mitigation lands yet. Do you guys have that information? That's the, we don't have that information that's being dealt with with our right away and other departments and so your best okay. bet would be to Which department? Employees. Probably the right away department and or the environmental department. Are you referring to MCRCB? So no, no um, the mitigate, what, what is the forever rules on these lands is governed by a conservation <coughs> easement that's like a law that goes along with the land okay. called the conservation easement. Um, I wondered if the alleyways that take the cattle from one field to another, they're 50 foot wide roads that go across the <coughs> area, have they been built yet? So the uh, alleyways, um, we don't construct anything, but they, they delineate the area so they can bring the cattle with the linear path instead of going through uh, the, some of the sensitive species. So 
there are nothing to construct. They just said uh, in the plan as a well, it said that, that 7,000 um, cubic yards were going to be removed from the alleyways in the construction of them. That's not no. the case? No. Okay. Um, and then there were 47 acres of ripping and disking. Has that already happened? Yeah, the ripping and disking, uh, right after we uh, uh, grade the wetland creation area, because of the heavy equipment, so the soil is compacted. So mainly they have a specialized equipment, they go and loosen up the soil. So that's already happened. That's all happened. That's all happened. Um, let's see. Um, so there were, uh, there are two mitigation contracts out now, and you say there are going to be more that haven't been started yet? Yes. And what are those for? Uh, I don't have that information. More, more planting, but the project development team working on that. So the only two projects are in construction. Mostly just planting, right? Mostly planting. Not, not, not additional grading as far as we know. Okay. And um, then uh, have cultural resource protections been added to the mitigation plan for into perpetuity? Should more um, cultural resources be found, or how to deal with the ones that are there? I think that's basically beyond the scope of our control and our environmental department working with the tribes and covering up with what those are. And uh, I'm not sure that we have enough information to answer your question. Okay. <laughs> and then I was wondering about phase two. Um, what is Caltrans planning about? The bypass phase two. Phase two. I, I don't know of any current uh, bill for phase two of the bypass. So just to bring that home, uh, phase one is being constructed now. It, it, as you come northerly, it goes from a four lane to a two lane, and it goes goes continues into a two lane. The, the phase two would be another two lane, so it would be a four lane bringing it to a level of service C. What you have is phase one would be a level of service of D and getting interregional traffic out off the city streets. And you know what, uh, currently Willits is the only signalized intersections on one along between San Francisco and Eureka. And, um, but I do not have a schedule for phase two. Okay. Um, I believe that's all my questions. Thank you very much. Holly? Yeah. Are we done out there? I think so. Do we have anybody else in the public want to address this second, third, and last call? Yeah. Um, uh, what I was going to say earlier is that I just want people to know that they're, that one, are obviously our uh, meetings are televised, but also we have a local reporter ha that has a recording device. I had a constituent that spoke to the cannabis issue last time and was surprised to hear herself on the radio. <laughs> I said, well, it is a public meeting, but just so the people know that it is being recorded for reporting purposes. And I um, uh, would love if maybe we can find out what the environmental department is working on with the, uh, with the tribes. I know that the security of the sites, that would just be good information either, if, either from the reporters or um, I know it's outside of our jurisdiction, but there's been a lot of discussion about the historical sites that are available and to many people in the Wilts area, it was basically unknown to them if they weren't going to the museum and seeing, you know, the where these villages were. And I think it would be a it would be a real asset to be able to have some sort of interpretive sign describing the the villages that were out in the valley for people that are coming by. Anything else? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to. Um, I think it's something that. Um, Kim brought up, um, Kim Bancroft, was the, um, the interface of, and Adrian spoke to it to some extent, the interface of what the city wants to see happen on Main Street, especially north of Highway 20, which will be the part that's relinquished, and what Caltrans is obligated to, to do to bring it up to a good state of repair, and how we can make that a seamless and hopefully efficient and satisfactory process for the city of Willits to reclaim um, Main Street uh, for ourselves. And, and I'm concerned that the timing may or may not um, all be well, well, well oiled. Um, it, it would be really nice if we don't have to tear it up twice and that we could have the, the, all the Main Street work that we would like to see done simultaneously done with, with the uh, upgrading of 
Main Street to good state of repair, which, which Caltrans is required to do. Um, and, and I know that there are committees working on that, but I, I, I think that the public wants to be kept up on that as well. And um, right now yeah, it's right. all... Yeah, it's going to be a pretty much a full week of it next week. I yeah. Mean, so these guys are... are uh, it's not really their wheelhouse of the project, the, 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 the relinquishment thing, but I think, uh, uh, you know... I think we're all, I think the community is aware, I think I think everyone's aware that, you know, this, our, our grant got stalled for six months before it got started. We were, um, you know, we're doing our best to get it done as quickly as possible, and Caltrans, in the meetings that I've been in, are, are anxiously awaiting uh, what we have, but, but okay. it's still, there's still all the negotiation to go through, of, number one, whatever we come back through with this process is a, is how much you know extra it's going to cost and how much we can you know we're the ones that are going to have to put into that we're going to try and do it with our cash to the limit that we have it or are we going to try and borrow money for it or are we going to try and go out for atp or atcs or you know i mean <laughs> go go for some uh, financial assistance in that and that's all you know that's kind of the the nitty and gritty of, uh, of the, the process, and we're right, we're right in the middle of it. Right that now. brings up one other question I have for these guys. Well, well as long as it's not on the relinquishment, because I, I really it's don't not. think that's a fair question. It's not. To um, and I realize that we have Boy Scouts here, and they're looking forward to our next agenda item. But um, you just brought up the funding. The CTC cutting all that funding are, is your give you an projects. Yeah. How, how are specifically the child projects of the Sherwood, and are those going to be negatively affected by that? Not yet. I've had meetings with both Mark Sikonik and Matt Brady on that issue, and I was planning on mentioning that in okay. my report. But so far, our projects are uh, in the, the projects related to the relinquishment and uh, are still uh, in their funding position that they were. But okay. They found other projects in Region 1 to uh, model ball to okay. meet their 25% uh, reduction. But Thank you. There's more to follow. Okay, uh, thanks very much, guys. Really appreciate you coming over. Uh, and I hope that you have a very productive season out there. Thank you very much. And, Thank uh, you. It's looking like a real highway. It's looking we can good. Go. <laughs> good job. Thanks for having me. Put the first. Okay, um, move on now to the uh, consent calendar. And, you know, do that we do have some Lions Club and some scout members here. I, I'm going to pull that just for ceremonial purposes. I don't think it's <laughs> going to change anything. I don't think I, so either. I would ask that. Look I'll, for, look for an, a, a I'll move we accept consent, consent calendar. calendar items A through H removing G. Before we go there, I would like to pull D and E. Which one? Can I, I respond to that for a moment? I don't think that's um, We, as a matter of policy, never talk about uh, claims and litigation in an open session. And just routinely, claims are denied virtually always mm -hmm. and if there's some discussion that you want to have about that I think what we should do is amend the agenda to add this to closed session we can talk to the council in closed session about it the, otherwise leave it on for denial yeah this is what I would like to I, I think in my mind it's appropriate to talk about in closed session well that in that, closed session well then well so I, I guess I would have to um, I'm, I'm not sure if it's appropriate at this moment, but uh, uh, make a motion to amend the agenda to allow that to happen. Is that uh, okay? That requires a four-fifths vote, a second and four-fifths. Are vote. these are the are these a uh, an urgency item? Well, there's timing. No, there, it, 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 could be, it could be put over to the next meeting if, that, if that's what you'd like to do. And that's what I'd say. Do it and put okay. it into closed session. That'd be fine. That's fine. So which like items are those? I don't. I think it's the. Or is it all four claims? No, just the two. D and E. D. They are. They are related, but it's D and E that, D &E. that, that I'm concerned with. 
So we're taking Unless those off of the consent. Unless somebody else wants to talk about B and C as well. No. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll move approval of A, B, C, a, B, C, C, D, and F. Oh, wait, and said H. And H. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're, sorry, moving, we're moving D, E, and G. You got that, D, Kathy? E, and G. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Poor Dolores. Is, a, is there a second on the consent? I'll second. Element? Scouts are going to get disgusted here in a second. <laughs> uh, is there any public comment on the consent calendar? <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Strange? Yes. Strong? Yes. Manual? Yes. Ornstein? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Okay, now I'd look for a motion to approve the lease agreement with the Wells Lions Club and the Scout Hut and surrounding exterior premises located at 405 East I'll second. Second. Okay. Any comment on that? Any comment from the scouts? You, you guys are here. Are you guys okay with what we put together? Yeah. Huh? Do you know what you're committed to now? You're welcome to come up and address the council if you like. <laughs> Might get a merit badge out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't need to put them on the spot. We'll have, Good a, for we'll have a roll call vote. Councilman Pastransky? Yes. Matt? Uh, yes. Strong? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Marcy? Yes. Yes. Well, congratulations do, do on your we staff have a, do, we wanna, do we have a finished contract here we can sign? Yes. Yeah, we do. I, I want to ask that we clean up. Paragraph number four has underlining over in the text that should come out. But the signature signature page is perfect, ready to be signed. <laughs> Bert, you want to you want to come up and sign it? Photo off. Take a moment. I don't know that he heard you. Either of you guys have cameras? Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, do you want a picture of the Boy Scouts? <laughs> they came all down. I you don't have a camera. Second. I got my phone. That works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you want to take one? Sure, please. So if the on, Boy Scouts Scout, that are here, go line go up over down. here on the wall. Come on, right up here. <laughs> it's a momentous occasion. Right over here. Come on up too. Everybody in here. Fall back in the back. Guys, have to get your pool belts now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, there's work to do. Yeah. Thanks for taking it on. Thank you. You know what you're taking on, right? Thank you. Maybe, maybe not because of my cold. I don't want to, I don't want to give you any germs. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay, um, Right to appeal. Persons are dissatisfied with decisions. The city council may have a right of view of that decision by a court. Cities adopt a 1094.6 code of civil procedure, which generally limits to 90 days. 
the time within decisions of city boards and agencies may be judicially challenged. So take note of that, scouts. <laughs> Do we have any city manager reports? Yes. Okay. Your um, time. Okay. Well, first I want to revisit the planning fair. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that is uh, kicking off next Monday, the 18th. Um, it's going to kick off as far as the public's participation with a walking assessment of Main Street uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. and then an open house at the old Rexall building at 6 p.m. until 8. And um, every night except for Tuesday, there is an open house of some sort at the Rexall building uh, where the public is invited to come in and, and chat with the design consultants and look at how, how the plans are shaping up. Um, in addition, we have three focus groups planned. Um, they are with targeted audiences. Um, so one is with Main Street merchants. One will be with local agencies, such as uh, law enforcement, fire emergency services, the school district, um, MTA. I think I invited the post office as well. And then the third focus group is going to be with um, our seniors at the senior center. Um, we were trying to get youth and seniors together for a focus group, but that uh, didn't come together easily. So the uh, high school students, a group of them will be walking down on Wednesday afternoon um, to the Rexall building and then sharing their feedback from that experience um, with, the, with the design team. Um, again, I just want to emphasize this, this is it. This is a public's opportunity to weigh in and um, you know, let your, your thoughts be heard. Um, at the end of the week, on Friday evening, we're going to have a wrap up of this and that's when the design team will <coughs> share um, the designs that have come out of that process. Um, then they're gonna go back and uh, fine tune those designs and continue working with city staff and Caltrans. Um, in May, May 19th, I believe, which should be a Thursday, um, we're going to have a street fair on East Commercial rather than on Main Street because of encroachment <coughs> permit issues. And so we are going to be setting up a, a scale um, model of some of the design elements that um, come out of this process for the community to walk it, drive it, bike it, use it, give us feedback on it, and um, there'll be an opportunity for any, you know, fine tuning at that point, and then shortly thereafter, um, these designs will be submitted to Caltrans for them to incorporate into their uh, relinquishment project, and I think at that point, that's when we'll have a much better sense of what type of negotiating we need to do with Caltrans, but rest assured, we have been in very regular communication with them. They've been coming to, um, they've been participating in our project team meetings, which is city staff, uh, LGC, the, um, the, the consultants, and as well as our advisory group uh, meetings, which are meeting about once a month. Um, so they've been engaged thus far, and I think we're all feeling anxious about the timeline uh, and concerned about coordinating uh, everything that we need to accomplish. Uh, but everybody's been working uh, very committedly towards that, that goal. Uh, so that's what I have to say about the planning fair. Second item is um, the murals. Um, when John's place burned down last year, um, the mural that was on the side of the building was saved and that was um, put away for safekeeping until we could determine uh, what to do with it. Uh, and so Kathy actually came up with the idea of putting it um, on, where am I at? <laughs> on the front of this building for the community to enjoy. Uh, she'd also heard some, some rumors that the Noyo Theater might be interested in having theirs relocated and so she contacted them. And so both of those murals will be um, installed tomorrow on the outside of the community center. Hey, remind me, what, what was that mural? What was it on, at, uh, on John's place? Was it Persico's? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Tim Settle's grandfather. Okay, so it was one of the character, the, right. these people. 
things. And the one on the Noyo is Mavis Brahmagen. Right. And something else, I forget what the other one was. Was it the dairy? I think it's, the just, I think it's dairy? just that one. I thought it was, I thought it was just the one. Oil. Is there one? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. I'm seeing double, I guess. Mm -hmm. right. um, then I need to let you know that um, city maintenance crews are going to be doing some uh, tree removal of dead trees at Snyder Park um, in the very near future. Um, we dug out a tree management plan that was presented to the city council back in 92. And there were, it was a pretty comp comprehensive report of recommendations about prioritizing tree removal and replacing them. And so um, those, many of those trees should have been removed years ago because of the safety hazards uh, that they present. Um, so maintenance crews are going to be uh, embarking on this project um, with the worst ones coming out first and the replacement trees um, are being prepared. We're um, working with Dave Watts of Sanhedrin Nurse Nursery. So specifically, four trees in the fall of 2016 um, are being currently being prepared to be planted in the fall. Uh, 68 trees along State Street uh, targeted for the fall of 2017. Six trees and 28. 68 or six? Six to eight. Sorry. Six to eight. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, and then <laughs> there, there goes the urban forest. <laughs> six trees and 2018 that are along Marin Marin Street. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I'm glad that they're being prioritized because I know a number of years ago they did the entire. Humboldt Street, which was rather startling. If there's any way to phase it in and do, you know, that's exactly yeah. That's yeah. Kind of what they yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> and then I, know, I think one spanking is. Oh. <laughs> get it over with. I was just pointing out that the phasing was from 1992, so that it's, it's yeah. a little faster pace than yeah. 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 24 years. Right. So just carpet bomb them all. All right. Uh, then uh, one last item. Uh, yeah. Su Susie is out um, ill today, and so that's why she's not here tonight. But um, hopefully she'll be well enough tomorrow to attend the REMIC board meeting with me and Ukiah. The April meeting is when we talk about our um, health care benefits and premiums and, and the such. Mm -hmm. So I will be out tomorrow for that. OK. That's it. And Move on to. Oh, I just wanted to um, mention that I, I asked several questions about the retail sales report that was in the packet, yeah, thank and you um, for that. I am going to you know wait for Susie to be yeah, well. Yeah, I had several. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, there were some I, I, you know uh, difficult to understand. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I had a couple things yeah, on that so. too. Um, anything from the city clerk? That's for my Great. You're not Thanks for it. covering, Dolores. So <laughs> I will. I'll protect her. Pulling items firing Um. Anything from the legal beagle? No. <laughs> Chief. Lots of sirens this afternoon. Not ours. Oh, okay. Not really a report, but kind of using this as a plug. I'm still looking for, out of our last dispatcher test, we ended up with one candidate. So we're still kind of casting it out again. So you've seen the ad. If you've looked in the paper, you've seen the ad. Um, we're looking for another dispatcher. We're going to be posting our community service officer position uh, also. Uh, in the meantime, everybody's been kind of doing double duty. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, Scott Warnock in. Uh, hired a new attempt in helping us with our property room. So that's how we've been rolling there. So so kind of using this as an advertisement. I'm looking for dispatchers. So. All right. Jerry. Nice phone voice is all you need. Jerry. Jerry Sharp. Jerry, 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 Chief. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you, can you just, uh, add something about, you know, I, I've heard stories about the, the accident on, on the, the Ridgewood grave. Do, do you know anything about that? Which one today? Yeah. All I know is our officers went out to assist uh, yesterday. Uh, fire yesterday. department. No, today. today. Or there was oh, one today. There was one yeah. yesterday yeah. too. Yeah, they, I don't know about the one yesterday. Okay. Um, but the uh, one today, our 
officers went out to assist CHP with traffic control. Apparently, the fire department showed up, and um, you know, in, in this county, uh, law enforcement is kind of stretched thin, and so uh, our guys heard the fire department out there requesting assistance for traffic control. So they responded out there until CHP showed up, and then CHP requested they stay and help with traffic control. Yeah, I, I was just curious. I heard that it was a head-on collision, then it was a single vehicle that turned over. I, I was just yeah, I don't have any details. Okay, thank you. Let's see, John, anything from you tonight? Building inspection. Yeah, is we have. <laughs> um, as I reported to you, January and February were pretty slow. We came on really strong in March, and we made up for it. So <laughs> I believe we we have a record first quarter yeah. uh, here, and uh, this last month, if you see your permit activity reports, we got kind of close to two million dollars in mm -hmm. one month. So things are looking good. Uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, come out to the new O'Reilly Auto Parts grand opening on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, I was out there today. Did essentially a final inspection. The place looks great. They've got a little striping to do and they're out of it. Uh, the work along Main Street turned out really good. Um, I think we've got a new business operating in town. Are they a new business or did they move from somewhere in town? They're, they were, they're new to this community. Okay. What time is the grand opening? Uh, they're going to start at 10. going to go all day. They'll be happy to have you whenever you have time. Okay. Great. Dusty? Um, just, just wanted to um, make the council aware of a couple things that are going to be coming up on upcoming agendas. Uh, we've got another use permit for John's Place. This is going to be uh, try number three. Uh, they're looking to go into the property at the corner of East San Francisco and Highway 101. Uh, that's uh, scheduled for your May 11th agenda. Uh, we also had another meeting of the Revite Ed Committee, uh, and we'll maybe get to that a little bit later on the agenda, but I did want to let the council know that the plan is to go ahead and agendize on the next meeting uh, to let you know what priorities that we came up with that we'd like to take on uh, but we certainly want to vet that with the full council to make sure that we're on the right track. Uh, so look forward to that as well. Um, yeah. Appreciate it. That, look forward to seeing that. Those comments. Um, public Works and Engineering, Rod. I just have uh, two things water related to share tonight. Um, three million gallon tank repair was completed and we were back online on April 1st. So it was seven full weeks from the time we started draining the tank until it was back in service, which is a pretty major accomplishment for, for the city, for the water department and <coughs> Scott and Clarence and Bill and pretty much had staff from all departments uh, assist on the project from getting the road ready for the heavy equipment to get up there to um, welding and uh, doing the legwork so um, uh, they deserve a lot of credit for all the work they did please congratulate them yeah like it's all well done a little overdue but it's, it's completed and we're uh, happy with the results um, just yesterday we had the pre-bid for the Main Street Waterline job and we have eight interested contractors and um, that's, a good, that's a good thing, we're going to have some good competition. We were able to, um, through testing, we did some, we did some uh, follow-up soils testing and uh, conferred with the Division of Drinking Water and the line will now be uh, PVC plastic instead of ductile iron, which is going to be a considerable savings in materials and uh, construction. So, good. That's it. What was the engineer's estimate on that? Not a little, little over nine hundred thousand. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. 
Any questions on uh, public works? Thanks, Rod. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to council member and committee reports. M. Cobb? Yes, we met yesterday and uh, we had a tour of Ukiah and the things that they have in the works to do and some of them that, uh, that they have in the works now and they're trying to work some things out with the county and uh, very interesting we got to walk on the new uh, rails with trails path and that's really a, they really did a nice job um, they have it very well lighted and uh, it, it was just a nice experience for all of us to walk it it's, it's a long ways but it's it's a nice walk yes uh, anything from LAFCO? <laughs> LAFCO met. I was unable to attend. <coughs> okay. MTA? Um, our most recent meeting, we did um, select a general manager, and I believe that she will be starting May 1st. Uh, but I think they're still seeking to get housing for her. And um, so that, that was a big success. Things are going well. So that job comes with housing? No, but she needs to have housing in order to take the job. So we're just trying to help her out finding a suitable motel. <laughs> she she comes with a family and needs you know certain a couple rooms. Yeah, she needs to. Anyway, uh, it, it, it's going well. And um, meanwhile, the staff is really uh, spreading themselves thin until that, uh, not only the general manager needs to be on board, but we also have a vacancy in the transportation manager. So. Um, everybody's been short, short-handed, but they're doing a great job. I apologize. I do have something else on that. Go. Okay. Uh, this morning, I was unable to attend uh, Monday's meeting, but this morning they had a training for special districts, and this is uh, something that LAFCO has been doing. The first one was very well received uh, in Ukiah. The second one was here today, and then there's going to be another one in Fort Bragg. But this is for if anyone's serving on cemetery districts or you know some of these smaller districts this is a big win to have trainings here rather than having to go to Southern California which is where they usually are um, so if people want more information on the final one that's in Fort Bragg uh, they can go to the LAFCO website okay. uh, Swan met on the 24th of March and and probably the only significant thing you know it's a lot of stuff but the, uh, they, there's a project to build a new transfer station on the coast and um, that's pretty much a contract between the city of Fort Bragg and the county so personally I've been kind of keeping a you know, peripheral vision on it but we, we learned that um, there's a court <coughs> challenge to the EIR and it's very possible that the, the, the finish date has been pushed back like four years. And where that concerns MSWA is that MSWA loaned $100,000 for preparing the EIR and for the project, and we're just wondering, and I intend to bring it up at the next meeting, which will be about two weeks, um, you know, what is that gonna mean? And maybe might even raise the question of whether or not this this transfer station is even necessary. So, who did MSWA loan the money to? You know, I'm I'm, I'm not. I guess I should check that. But it's, it's it's the entity that's putting together the EIR and and the project, which is not really uh, MSWA. I think it's. I'll have, to, I'll have to find out. Good question. Um, League of California Cities? Uh, did not meet. Water and wastewater have not met. Rebite Ed did though, right? Yes. So Rebite Ed met, and as Dusty mentioned, uh, there's going to be a, a, a more thorough uh, description of the goals that we had suggested that we were wanting to work on. Um, we talked a bit more about the sphere of influence and we're able to get maps uh, on the um, out of area service connections and a couple of other maps so that we can look over those. Um, we had a 
sizable conversation on vacancy abatement. And uh, the Revite Ed committee members have some strong opinions on the direction we should go. So we'll be sharing that with you all because nothing's going to happen without. That's related to commercial properties. Yes. I'm sorry. Commercial vacant properties, specifically historically mm -hmm. empty properties around town. Mm -hmm. uh, we have them. <laughs> Yeah, there, there was a lot of discussion about it. Um, and then also Caltrans signs, which, uh, again, we got a lot more information as far as the best way to move forward on that. Um, I did receive and passed on to Dusty, and we can make available to the council, the signing, the signage and striping plan, which at first I was thought was engineering gobbledygook, but actually it does show it's basically the Caltrans basic ones. You know, Calpella, this Calpella's on there. You know, a sign that says this many miles to Calpella, this many miles to Ukiah, where those are going to be. And so those are shown on there. Uh, we want to review it and just make sure that if there's something that the city wants to advocate for, like say we want it to say uh, downtown business route on, or on one end, or if we want to add signs, mm -hmm. we have that. Uh, their current plan, we've got that available. And I believe that was it. And we'll have a more thorough um, information for you all. But yeah, we had a really good turnout, I think largely because of the, uh, where, where does your money, where does our local money go? A lot of um, people referenced the Revite Ed Committee at that event. All right. Um, Finance committee has not met. Ad hoc committees. Marijuana regulation review has not met since the last meeting. JPA feasibility for wastewater treatment facility. We did meet. Months I don't know ago. if it was. Did we meet? Yeah, not since the last meeting. Yeah. No. Okay. They tend to issue. tend to <coughs> blend together, and I don't think there's a relinquishment that's met since the last meeting either. Um, anything from EDFC? Um, they're now going to having the full board meetings every other month. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow will be an executive committee meeting at which any board member and the public is also um, welcome to attend those. But it'll be 2 o'clock tomorrow. So it's the executive committee, which basically handles a lot of the loan review uh, functions. So uh, the next regular meeting won't be until a month from now. And uh, spent a couple of days with your buddy Alan Hempel. What's going on at NCRA? NCRA met today, and I was unable to go. Okay. <laughs> you got to hang out. Last, you, last do you know week. any more than I do? No, we didn't really ever talk about the railroad. So. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, anything from council member reports or recommendations? Well, good. Uh, any good in welfare? I well, just want to uh, mention that the April 7th meeting uh, about where money goes and how to keep more of it local was, was very inspiring and our panelists were very well informed and people were um, really excited about some of the, the ideas and basically among other things is the importance of shopping local because that money continues to circulate in the community and to try to resist the uh, temptation to get it just a little bit cheaper someplace else, but uh, but get better service from our, our local merchants and retail outfit. Um, and there was also concern about the impact of the bypass on our um, revenues and our businesses. So uh, I think there will continue to be more um, activity around that. It was really nice to have the Chamber of Commerce and Well co-sponsor that and, and work together. So I, I see that being a fruitful in the future. Okay. Um, we do have closed session tonight. It, is there two topics on it or one? Or am um, I in or out? You're in. I'm you're in. in. There's no discussion about development that would pose a conflict. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good. And a good, good and welfare item. Me too. Oh, good. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we'd covered it. Uh, last week was it? Do you want to? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think you all remember Audrey Swafford who used to walk around the community 
when she passed away, her daughter made a uh, nice donation to the city with the request <coughs> that we do something um, meaningful with it. And so Kathy and John worked together, um, this was some, some months back, to put in place um, shelters for the uh, uh, seating areas at the ball fields. And then last week, um, we had the plaque ready to um, put up on the building. And so that occurred, the newspapers came out and took some photos. I think um, that story might be in, in a Good. paper or two this week. Cool. But I just wanna thank Kathy and John for um, seeing that project through and certainly our public works crew for um, getting it done. Great. I was just gonna add that um, the Will Center for the Arts has started their fundraising to paint the exterior of the building. And the kickoff event was a poetry and Emmendal Corral saying, I had my doubts on how many people would come out to a poetry event, because it's not my cup of tea. Full house, like 120 <coughs> people. I was really impressed by the, the showing of support uh, by the community. And the next event is gonna be a art for all ages event, uh, free if kids wanna come and get their face painted and learn how to do collage and stamping and printmaking, and that's April 23rd. And I just want to say that the baseball season has started and the Giants are doing awesome. <laughs> so is it more importantly, does anybody know how the Warriors are doing tonight? It's Tonight's the record. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how would you know that? <laughs> so we're going to, to uh, recess the closed session on this one issue of Renko versus the City of Willis. And uh, if any decisions are made out, they'll be reported back in here. That, that having been on the agenda for 20 years, I, if I had to make the best use of my time, I'd go home. <laughs> <laughs> but you're welcome to do that. Wait if you like. <laughs>